guys, my name is Nako Nakatsuka. I'm a fourth year chemistry PhD student at UCLA, and today I'll be helping you guys out by going over some general chemistry concepts. And good luck with the course. So the Van t Hoff equation in chemical thermodynamics relates the change in the equilibrium constant of a chemical equilibrium to the change in temperature, given the standard enthalpy change of the process. But before I get into that, let me show you another relationship that we can make between standard free energy change of a reaction and equilibrium constant. Basically, remember we had delta G is delta H minus T delta S. Well, another way in which this can be written is that delta G is negative RT ln K, where this is the equilibrium constant. So the standard free energy of a change of a reaction can be related to the gas constant, the temperature, and the equilibrium constant. And here are some relationships between the two. So when the products and the reactants are all in their standard state, and K equals 1, then delta G equals 0. Because remember, when the equilibrium constant is equal to 1, you have the same concentration of products and reactants, right? Because equilibrium constant can be written as products over reactants. But this is the state at equilibrium, since delta G is 0 and K equals 1. But then, when K is less than 1, then delta G is positive. And then when K is greater than 1, then delta G is negative. So as you can see from here, when the equilibrium constant is greater than 1, what does that mean? That means that the concentration of products is greater than reactants, meaning that it's a forward reaction, right? And when delta G is negative, it's a spontaneous process, which favors the products. Okay, so from here, we can work on the Van t Hoff equation, because we have this equation, where we relate delta G to the equilibrium constant, and we have this equation where we relate it to the enthalpy and the entropy. If we equate these to one another, so delta H minus T delta S equals negative RT ln K, we can rearrange it, where we can write this out as ln K is negative delta H over RT, because we move this to the other side, plus delta S over R. And this equation is the Van t Hoff equation. There we go. And you can see the temperature dependence of the equilibrium constant, because temperature is right here. So the Van t Hoff equation can be also used to calculate the equilibrium constant at different temperatures if the enthalpy value is known. So let me show you that right here, where if we have ln k1 is delta H over RT plus delta S over R. And then let's say there's another value, ln k2 is negative delta H over R T2. So let me put a 1 right here for the T1 plus delta S over R. Now, since this is a natural log, we can rewrite this as ln K2 over K1 equals negative delta H over R T2 plus delta H over R T1. So as you can see, using the natural logs and relating the two and subtracting it from one another, we can get this relationship. And at this point, we assume that delta S is constant because we got rid of it. 
Another way which we can write this, and I will do that over here because I'm running out of space, is we can do the natural log of k2 over k1 is equal to the negative delta h of r, and then we can write out the temperatures as 1 over t2 minus 1 over t1. In this case, we assume that the delta H is constant because we're just using one value here. If these two values were different, then we wouldn't be able to make it simpler in this form. But when the delta S value is constant and the delta H value is constant, this is the most useful way in which you can use the different equilibrium constant and the different temperature values to figure out enthalpy, for example. So this is a really good equation to know, and this is the Van Hoff equation. So I wanted to finish off this chapter by talking about two definitions of these terms that didn't really show up in this chapter that I talked about, but they're really important when we talk about thermodynamics. So adiabatic is when a gas is compressed under adiabatic conditions its pressure increases and its temperature rises without the gain or loss of any heat. On the other hand, when a gas expands under these conditions, its pressure and temperature both decrease without the gain or loss of heat. So all this is saying is that Q or the change in Q equals zero because there is no gain or loss of heat. So basically, heat could not be exchanged with the system. So when we talk about an isolated system, remember, in a closed system, matter can't be exchanged, but energy can be exchanged. In an isolated system, there could be no energy exchange, such as heat. And so isolated systems are adiabatic. And then when we talk about isothermal, what that means is that the change in temperature is zero.